Hello, I am Manish Bharadwaj, Systems Application Engineer with Texas Instruments supporting C2000 system solutions. Today I am going to talk about the Software Frequency Response Analyzer or the SFRA and demonstrate SFRA running on the C2000 Digital Power Supply Workshop Board. Shown here is a digitally controlled buck power stage. To control this, first the voltage is sampled, then a compensator function compares the sampled value with the reference and computes a duty value which through a PWM module is used to excite the system. The compensator choice affects the closed loop system performance and needs to be selected carefully. Here we see a closed loop system with transfer function of the plant H, compensator G and feedback F. The goal of the system is to track to a reference R with zero steady state error and reject any disturbances D. From this control diagram, the steady state error and the sensitivity or the disturbance rejection transfer function can be derived. These functions are seen to be dependent on the open loop transfer function that is FGH. Bode plots of the open loop transfer function are widely used by the power supply designers to comment on the stability of the system by looking at the bandwidth, the gain margin and the phase margin. To find the open loop transfer function, knowledge of the plant, the feedback and the compensator is required. Compensator and feedback are easy to identify but accurate plant transfer function is difficult and requires precise modeling of each component in the system and can be error prone. Hence, power supply designers prefer to measure the frequency response of the system to verify the modeling. In some cases, measured data of the plant frequency response can be used directly to design the compensator as well. The SFRA library enables measuring the frequency response of the plant and the open loop quick and easy by small additions in software and no hardware modifications are needed. To appreciate this, let's look at the software of a digitally controlled buck converter. Here we see the interrupt service routine where the three tasks to control the power supply are being performed. First, the sampled ADC voltage is read. Second, the compensator calculates the control effort. And third, the PWM pattern is updated. Adding SFRA to the software, we see addition of two new functions in the ISR. The SFRA IQ inject and the SFRA IQ collect. The inject function is used on the reference of the controller to add some disturbance and the collection function is called with the values of the feedback and the compensator output to monitor the effect of the injected disturbance. A background function, SFRA background, needs to be periodically called in a slow background task and is responsible for periodically sweeping different frequencies and calculating the response based on the values measured in the inject and collect functions. Complete steps required to add the SFRA library to a project are listed in the SFRA library user guide. So now that we have looked at the code, let's run the SFRA demo on the DPS workshop board with the F28035 control card. To do this, let's open CCS and click on View TI Resource Explorer under Control Suite, select Power Suite and then Libraries and SFRA. Links to the documentation, code examples and the PC-based GUI are available under this Resource Explorer tab. For this demo, let's select the F28035 example and import it into the current workspace. Complete steps on how to connect the DPS workshop board to the computer and jumper settings on the board are available under the case study section of the SFRA user guide.
Here I have the code running on the DPS workshop board and it is regulating the output at 2 volts. With the power supply running, click on the GUI tab under SFRA in the resource explorer. This will launch a PC based GUI that is used to see the frequency response data measured by the SFRA. On this GUI, click Setup Connections and select the Active Communication port. Select Fixed Point and click Connect. GUI will then connect and display the frequency sweep configuration that is currently programmed on the device. First is the frequency vector length which is the number of points frequency sweep is performed at. Next is the start frequency of the sweep and can be modified from the GUI. Steps per decade box shows the number of points in a decade the frequency response data is collected for. This value combined with the frequency array length and the start frequency determines the max frequency the sweep will collect data at and is displayed below this box. The injection amplitude is the magnitude of the disturbance that is injected on the reference and can be modified. Note, this is typically very small around 1 to 2 percent. Now, let's start a frequency sweep. Once finished, the GUI updates with the open loop and the plant frequency response data. Different parameters like bandwidth, phase margin and gain margin are also identified and displayed on the GUI. With a 3 kHz bandwidth and more than 45 degrees of phase margin, this looks to be a stable system. Next, we can select the plant option from the drop-down menu and observe the plant frequency response. The GUI also populates a spreadsheet with the data which can then be used to extract transfer function information of the plant to further refine the compensator. Scripts for doing that are available with the SFRA library inside Control Suite. Hope you found this video useful and for more information please visit www.ti.com slash tool slash SFRA and stay tuned for more tools under PowerSuite. Thanks for watching.